I'm going to show you how to make a Flask website with Python 3. And we're going to start with a very basic Hello World website and then make a static HTML website, make it dynamic with some variables and for loops, and then finally make it a multi-page website. And we're going to go through this workflow just so you understand the fundamental concepts at each step in the tutorial. So that way, by the end of the video, you have a really good understanding of Flask development. Now, I'm going to use Vulture, a Vulture server, a VPS server in this tutorial. You can use any server that you want, but if you don't have a server, I have free account credits for Vulture below, which will get you set up exactly as we're going to do in this video. So if you have a server, go ahead and skip forward in this tutorial. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get on into it. All right, I'm here at my Vulture dashboard. I'm going to deploy a server by clicking this button. We just need a simple cloud compute server regular performance. Uh, you can pick any server that's located near you. I'm going to pick uh, Silicon Valley. And then the as far as the server image, I'm going to pick Ubuntu 22.04. This $5 per month plan is more than enough for our purposes. I'm going to disable auto backups. And then that looks good. So I'll go ahead and deploy the server. It'll take a couple minutes. And when this says it's ready, then I'll catch back up with you. Okay, now that our server is running, as you can see right here, let's click on into it. And you may or may not get this message that it's still setting up. If so, you might have to wait a little bit longer. But let's take note of our IP address, our username, and our password. We're going to use this information to log in to the server via SSH. So if you're on Windows, open up a command prompt and actually have other videos about SSH and everything, which is what we're going to use to log in. Otherwise, if you're on Mac, you can open, open up a terminal window and you're going to simply type SSH root, which is the username at the IP address. I'm going to copy that right here and then paste it in, hit enter. And then it's going to say, do you want to continue connecting? Do you trust it? Yes. Hit enter. And then the password for root is this right here. So I'm going to copy that and then paste it in and we should be logged into our remote Ubuntu system. So here we go. Let's make sure as is always good practice to update our list of packages with sudo apt update. And then let's do a sudo apt upgrade to upgrade all the packages on the system. And we don't even have to do anything because they're already up to date. So next let's do sudo apt install Python three dash V E N V. We're going to make a Python virtual environment and this package is going to allow us to do that. And the reason we do a Python virtual environment is to make sure all of our code for our flask app is contained uh, in its own area and we're not interfering with the system packages. So with that install, we can do Python three dash M V E N V for virtual environment. And then we're going to make a virtual environment in a new directory in our home directory called env and we're going to call the virtual environment Teton. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do its thing. And when that's done, we can activate the virtual environment with source. And then we're going to go to that same path env. Now it exists Teton bin activate. Okay. So now we are in our Python virtual environment. And if you do which Python three, you'll see that it is getting the Python three binary from our virtual environment, which is perfect. Okay. So with that said, we can install the flask package via the pip package manager. And we can do that with pip install flask hit enter. And that'll go ahead and install flask into our Python virtual environment. Now let's go ahead and create our hello world flask app. What we're going to do is make a directory with make the make dir command and let's call it hike. Okay. And let's go into the hike directory with CD. And obviously there's nothing in here right now, but let's make a file called peak.py. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the Vim text editor. You can use nano or another text editor. I have other videos on how to use Vim if you're interested. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just edit this file called peak.py. And what we're going to do is make pretty much the most basic hello world flask app that you can possibly have. So you can follow along. We're going to from do from flask import flask, the flask object. And we're going to instantiate a flask object and assign it to the app variable. So app equals flask. And then we're going to pass in the name of this Python module, which we're currently in. And that is in the underscore underscore name underscore underscore variable. Okay, so we're going to add an app root, a root for our app. 
and it's going to be at slash. So basically when anybody goes to our IP address, maybe with a port, colon port, and then the slash, uh, this is what we're going to execute. This this definition that we're going to, this function that we're going to define right now called index, this is what we're going to execute, okay? And like I said, it's going to be simple. We're just going to simply return the text, hello world, world, W-O-R-L-D, okay, something like that. All right, now the, the only other gotcha here is um, if we want to run this script directly, without, because this is just the development server, we need this uh, little bit of code down here, two lines, if name, just like we have above, equals main, underscore, underscore, main, then we want to run the app with app dot run, we're going to pass in the host as 0, .0, .0, .0, and then the port as the default development port for Flask, which is 5000. Now, this is this is strictly for development purposes. Um, I'll have another video about how to deploy it into a production environment, but this is just allowing us to test it really quick uh, without doing too much infrastructure changes. So let's save that and let's run it. Let's run it and see what happens. Let's do Python and then peak.py. Hit enter. And it says if we go to our IP address, colon 5000, we should be able to access the website. So let's do that. And unfortunately, nothing's happening. And I already know that's the case because we have, if you're using Vulture, a firewall running, okay? So I'm gonna control C out of that. If we do UFW, which is the Ubuntu firewall, status, you'll, oops, UFW, status, you'll see that the only ports that are open right now are the ports for SSH, which is port 22. We have to tell UFW to allow port 5000 with UFW allow 5000. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now UFW status, we see that port 22 is open and port 5000 is open. So if we run our Flask app again and visit in a web browser, we will see hello world just like we expected. That's great and all, but let's go ahead and make some actual HTML. Let's serve some HTML code instead of just plain text. So let's control C out of our development server, okay? And let's make, actually, you know what? Let's make a directory called templates. And inside that directory, let's make a file called index.html. And in here, I'm just gonna write some basic HTML um, structure. So we're gonna have an HTML tag inside of there. We'll have the body tag. Inside of there, we'll have a header one element. And this is going to say, let's go on a hike. Okay. You can do whatever you want. This is just an example. We'll close out all of our tags, body, and then HTML. So this is some pretty basic HTML, but it's going to show us let's go on a hike in big, bold text. And actually, I just noticed these should both be header one elements. Okay. So let's save that. And now let's, in our... Um, peak.py file, let's tell it to serve that template. So let's open that back up. And instead of um, returning hello world, let's return render template, which we're going to import in a second, that index.html file. So we also, we imported a flask before, we also have to import render template. Okay, so it's a function that comes with the pip uh, package that we installed, the Flask package. So it's gonna uh, render the index.html file. So now if we save that and run, we can use the up arrow key to run that Flask app again, hit enter, we're still accessible at this IP address colon 5000. If we refresh the page, we'll see that we are now serving HTML. Let's go on a hike. Okay, so that is a static HTML website. Let me kind of show you an introduction to passing variables into our template. So I'm gonna open this back up, control C out of the development server in, in our template index.html file. Uh, let's add another line here. Let's make a paragraph element and we're gonna use uh, the variable syntax inside of this template, which is open curly, open curly, and then the name of a variable, which we will define inside of peak.py. So let's do mountain 
and then close curly, close curly, and then close the paragraph element. So basically, we're going to define a variable called mountain inside of our peak.py file, and we're going to pass it in via the render template. Let's do that now. So we'll save this file, open up peak.py, and instead of just rendering in the template, template and passing in the index.html file, we're also going to pass in that variable called mountain, and let's call it uh, Everest. Okay, so this is going to be defined inside of our template. So instead of seeing those curly brackets, we should see a new line with Everest. So let's try it out. Let's save that, start up our development server with, with python.peak.py, refresh the page, and indeed we see a new line with Everest. Now, one mountain is cool, but multiple mountains are even cooler. So let's go ahead and make a for loop to loop over multiple mountains. So let's first define, oops, let's first define our mountains inside of peak.py. So we can do that in a list variable. So let's do mountains equal, uh, let's say Everest. Uh, what do we got? K2 and Kilimanjaro, K-I-L-I-M. Kilimanjaro, <laughs> did I spell that right? Get a lot of crap for not spelling that right. Kilimanjaro, okay. Um, and now instead of passing in just one mountain like we did before, let's pass in all of the mountains. Okay, so the mountain variable inside of the template will now be a list of these three mountains. So over in our template, let's go ahead and Instead of just doing a paragraph element here, let's actually, oops. Instead of doing a paragraph element here, let's go ahead and make an unordered list, which is just bullet points. So we'll define that with UL. We'll open up our UL tag here, and then we'll close it down here. And in between there, we'll add our list items. So kind of like we did before with the curly bracket, curly bracket to um, access the variable, we can do something similar, curly bracket percent sign for a for loop. So for each mountain in the mountain variable, we want to create, we want to print out into the HTML or we want to define the HTML as a list element. And then like we did before, curly curly to access the variable MT and then close curly curly, close our list item and then finally, last line, we want to end the for loop. All right, so let's pick this apart. We have our standard, if you, if you get rid of all these curlies and percent signs, we have a standard unordered list with a list item in it. And as we saw before, this is the syntax for accessing a variable, which we are defining in each iteration of our for loop. So mountain has Everest K2 and Kilimanjaro, and then that's going to execute three times. The first time it's going to be Everest, Kilimanjaro, and then K2. That makes sense? Let's try it out. Let's save that. Execute uh, Python peak.py. Our development server is running. Let's refresh the page. And just like we expected, we see that bulleted list with Everest, K2, and Kilimanjaro. Okay, I know what you're saying. I spelled Kilimanjaro wrong. I, I see that now. Uh, let me fix that quick. And then after I do fix that, let's um, make a multi-page website, which is actually pretty easy to do. So uh, what we're going to do, let's start, at, start back in the template file. So template index.html. Um, instead of just printing out a list item, well, we're going to, and just the, the value in there, we're going to actually make it a link to a page that's specific for each one of the mountains. So you can link with the a tag in HTML. So a href equals slash mountain, which is uh, our new page, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. And then the name of the mountain itself, kind of like we just did before. And then the text that you're going to see, okay, so this is the link. That's the link. And then the text that you're going to see is the mountain itself, just like that. And then we'll close the A tag. So thinking back to what standard HTML looks like, this is simply just a link that goes to mountain slash some mountain's name. 
and the text for the link is going to be the name of the mountain. That looks good. Let's save that. And that over in uh, peak.py, we have to make, just like we have a page for the index here, we have to make another page for the mountains. And we don't have to make an individual page for the mountain. Like each mountain, we don't have to have a page for Everest, K2, and Kilimanjaro. We just have to make a generic mountain page, which is going to be a template for all of the mountains. So we'll do app.root. And like we specified in the index, it's going to be slash mountain slash mt. Okay, so we'll explain the syntax in a bit. Let me, it'll make sense once we write it out. And then we're going to define the mountain uh, function. And that's actually taking that argument of mountain. So let me, let me finish it like I said I was going to do. Return this is... Okay, so basically, what do we got going on here? We have a, a root for our app that is existing at slash mountain, and then this is basically a way to define a variable called mt in these bracket or in these uh, less than greater than signs. And then we're passing that variable into our mountain function, and we are printing it out just like we did in the first Hello World example. Simple, we don't need a template, just we're gonna print it out. This is Everest, this is Kilimanjaro, this is K2. So that's all we should need for a multi-page website in Flask. So let's save that, run our, develop, oops, run our development server with Python peak.py. And when we refresh the page, these should all turn into links like it does here. And now when we click on each one of these links, we should go to this URL slash mountain slash the name of the, the mountain. And that happens. The URL slash mountain slash Everest, this is Everest. Same thing for K2. Slash mountain slash K2, this is K2. And Kilimanjaro, there we go. Now, uh, the last thing I want to point out here is this big warning. This is a development server. Do not use it in production deployment. The next video here is going to show you exactly how to take what we did today and put it into production deployment. I'll see you guys over there. Subscribe. Thank you for watching.